Hi, Bob here with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, this video is just a quick sneak peek and an update to show people what we're doing with the XR12. We're currently building two of the machines right now. We got two of them on order. We got a lot of other people who want to order it. Um, we decided to go ahead and start taking orders on it on these machines because I believe our lead time should be around four weeks. We're, we all feel pretty good about that right now. We were able to obtain the chips for our own computers because as you might already know we built our computers here and we're also able to obtain 400 watt motors and amplifiers so we're actually looking pretty good when it comes to our Yaskawa servo motors. Now some good news on the XR12 we've gone to a much larger motor on the power head. Now the power head is right here. That's where the chuck is mounted to turn it. Um, on the XR6, we use a 400 watt Yaskawa motor. On the XR12, we use a 1000 watt motor because it's designed to spin a much, much larger piece. In fact, that motor is actually rated, will spin 12 inch, yeah, 12 inch schedule 80 pipe. That's like a 600 wall, 680 wall um, piece of pipe. It's a hunk of pipe, 24 feet long. The XR12 will handle that natively, no problem. So the good news is, before we had been told, figure October, November, maybe December to get those motors. We talked to Yaskawa earlier, and we may actually have the motors here in the next two weeks. So we're super excited about that, which means I can go ahead and complete Steve of Kentucky, which this is his machine, and the other gentleman, which I'm sorry, I don't know his name, um, try to get their machines done in the next couple weeks here. You know, If that motor shows up in two weeks, we only need a couple days, wire everything up, do some testing, stuff like that. So we're pretty happy about that. I mean, if you've been in our shoes fighting logistics, getting parts, boy, it doesn't take much to make us happy. If we just get something a little early, you know, it's made our whole day. But anyway, real quick, while I'm on this side of the machine, you can kind of see the size differences between the machine. Um, it's not going to show up in the camera real good, but if you're standing here, it's substantial. So real quick, for instance, on the XR6, about 16 inches of travel, 16 and a half inches of X travel. This machine right here, we've got just under 30 inches of travel. I know it's 27 inches inside the frame. On the XR6, from the single tooling rail to the bottom of the gantry, I believe it's right at about 12 inches in that ballpark, 12 and a quarter inches. It's 21 and a half inches on the XR12. Another thing we've done is we have a single tool rail in the XR6, so that's all we needed. It's plenty strong enough. The XR12, considering we're gonna be loading much, much heavier pieces of metal, we've gone to a dual rail tooling system, and that'll allow us to put much wider tooling or tool systems in it for more stability when you load this thing. So we've done that. Another thing we've done is the frame, not only did it get wider, it got a lot stronger because of the weight problem, the material weight problem. So whereas we're using a three inch, quarter inch wall square tubing backbone on the frame of the XR6, which is perfect, it works great. On this machine, it's actually a six by eight inch, quarter inch wall rectangular tube for that extra strength. Now, we had a gentleman call the other day wanting to know how much weight can the XR12 hold, and we don't really think there's a limit. I mean, if I wanted to, I could load up a solid piece of 12-inch steel in this machine and have no problem with it at all. Um, however, if we ever did run into an issue on the XR6 and the XR12, I've already have holes pre-positioned for what we call support legs if they're ever needed that we could basically put legs in the middle of the other legs. Um, that is just a precautionary measure because I can't think for the life of me why we would ever need to do that, but I thought, you know what, before we start shipping these machines all over the world, let's put some holes in it. So we've done that. All righty, let me do this. Let me reposition the camera to the front so I can show you a little bit more about the, the gantry, and we'll call it a day. Okay, here we are at the gantry. Now, if you notice, it's quite a bit taller machine. It's going to get a little bit shorter. We don't quite want it this tall. Um, we're probably going to drop it about four inches. These legs here are our test legs. And when you consider you're going to be cutting up about this high, I'd rather be cutting a little bit lower. So we're probably going to shorten it about four inches. But you can tell it's still a good sized machine because by the time we get the carriage on it, she's probably going to be pushing about eight feet tall to give you a good idea. 
Uh, weight, by the way, shipping weight on the XR6, we now know because we've delivered six machines in the last couple weeks or so, and um, one of them had, them had it shipped to them. Everybody else came and got their machines, um, and it weighed 4,000 pounds. So we're estimating this one's going to pop in a shipping weight of somewhere between, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say around 5,500 pounds in two crates. The XR6 one crate, this machine is two crates just because of the physical size of it. But anyway, looking at the gantry here, obviously we made it a lot taller, you know, to handle the bigger material. I've increased the wheelbase once again. We don't want any tilting. Even though we have a system that keeps the rollers down onto it, we didn't want um, any, we don't want any tilting. So the machine got a little bit bigger there. The biggest change I made to it, however, was on the gantry itself. That's this part here. On the XR6, it's made out of one inch thick, 10 inch tall plate. It's very, very heavy, very robust, works great even with the drilling. If you saw a previous video when I was drilling, um, you can see it works great. This machine, however, we're trying to go to a larger drill, the next step up. So I wanted a little more rigidity up here at the top. So I've gone to a, a C-channel type frame, 12 inch C-channel, 30 pounds per foot. So the gantry system now weighs a little over 500 pounds when everything is assembled and mounted. It's a pretty robust system. The other thing I've done is I've spread out the linear guides inside the gantry. We have a, a pretty uniquely uh, linear guide system where it's sealed with a roller system. Works really good. We don't have to use um, bellows that tend to fall apart over the years. We actually run a belt system. It works flawlessly. So we've increased that out to, once again, Rigidity for drilling. Plasma cutting, routing, doesn't matter. Drilling, it matters. Now, another thing we made much larger, this is what I refer to as the transport. And it's what's going to run on the linear guides. We're going to bolt the linear blocks out here and put it in gantry. Now, on the XR6, we run two linear blocks on the outside. It's all we needed. It's working beautiful. On the XR12, I didn't want to take any chances, so I just said, hell with it. We're going to go to eight linear blocks on the back just so that we have a little bit more rigidity this way. I don't even know if we're going to need it, but you know, what the heck, right? So anyway, that thing we did too, if you look at the front of a transport, you could kind of see the mounting pads that mount the tooling plate. Look at the difference on the XR6, on the XR12, probably about two and a half, three inches further apart. Once again, that's all done in the name of rigidity. Um, because this, this, is a, this is our bad boy right here. This is the one that is going to get it done. Anyway, I think that's really all I wanted to say. Um, I think we've talked about everything. If you've got any other questions, give me a call. Um, if, you've got it, if, if, if you want to order the machine, they are taking orders for them right now. Like I said, lead times are about four weeks or so. And we're feeling very, very positive about where we're at in the, as far as the global logistics you know, supply chain goes. Um, we've got enough computer chips for about 500 and something machines. We do have the motors and amplifiers are here. That was a big problem before. Yaskawa has done a wonderful job taking care of us. We love that company. Um, and now that we know that we can get the big 1,000 watt motors in a couple weeks, we are just to the moon. We're so happy with these things. But anyway, I want to thank you for tuning in. And um, I hope I answered some of your questions. If not, just give us a call. We'll, we'll try to answer some more. Anyway. Once again, I appreciate you. Take care. Goodbye.